Hey guys, Johnny Nerd out here, custom e-bike builder, retailer, reseller, fanboy, and I've got a topical video about battery safety and controller safety. All right, hey guys. So today I wanna to talk about two topics at once because they kind of, I don't know, they spill into each other. One is called current in rush, current in rush. I know I kind of uh, mumble a little bit. And the other one is about getting a battery with an on-off switch or getting one that does not have an on-off switch, something like this. Saddlebag battery or like a pouch frame battery. They, they, they're called a bunch of different things, but it's just a battery. It's like a dumb battery. that will have a bunch of cells with a BMS, hopefully, and it's just kind of taped together like this. And, you know, these have their pros and cons, but I just wanted to go over the difference between this and something you know, like this that has an on off switch right here. First of all, what is current inrush? Current inrush is what happens when you connect a battery to a controller while it's live. So a battery like this does not have an on off switch. So essentially this thing is always live. So when you go and you connect battery like this to your motor, this thing is on. So it means it's gonna send a bunch of power to that controller, regardless of whether it's on or off. And what that is called is current inrush. It means a lot of current is going to that controller. If you do that enough, it can fry your controller because a controller is essentially a little computer and what you're doing is just hard turning it on and hard turning it off, essentially. I know that you could turn it on and off from the display usually, but when you're plugging in this type of battery to it, it's just, it's right away. When you have an on off switch, this does usually, most of the time these switches will trickle the, the power in. Now this is really important when you get to high voltage systems like 72 volts. If you're running a 72 volt system like an X1 Pro or if you're doing a motorcycle conversion, you really wanna have something that's not just, you know, sending that current in rush to your controller. I, I've learned the hard way on this. I learned what this is the hard way and I fried a few controllers doing it by not having a, an on off switch in there and having a fuse breaker is not what you want. It's not the same. The fuse breaker is just going to stop in case there's a short essentially. It's like a protection. But you, what you really want to have is an on off switch. So what you could do is wire one in. If you have one like this, I would probably recommend wiring one in or the workaround is just don't plug and unplug this all the time. When you're plugging things in all the time and unplugging it, what you're gonna get is arcing, especially if you're using something like an Anderson connector. These are, you know, these are good. These are rated up to 45 amps as long as you're using the right terminals. 45 amps can cause, it's gonna arc. If you ever notice this, when you plug in your thing, it starts plugging your battery to your controller and you notice some arcing. That's not necessarily a, I mean, it's not great. You don't want that, but it's not necessarily a death sentence. But if you do that enough, enough, arcing will ruin those terminals in there. And essentially you're not gonna make contact anymore. If you have a battery like this, the best thing to do is don't unplug it and plug it all the time. If you can, leave it plugged in. That's the best. Uh, another terminal you may have is the XT90. Like if you're running a 72 volt, especially an XT90, this is a step up. This is rated for up to 90 amps. And an XT90S is a spark resistant version of this. It has a little green dot on it. You can see this one's not, not one, but generally you'd see it on the, on the female end, I believe. It, it works, it's a little bit better. It still is not perfect. You're, you could still get those sparks and those arcs and then you're just gonna pit those connectors out too. I've seen a lot of people burn out their controller because they have a battery like this and they're just constantly plugging it in, unplugging it like every day from the, after every ride from their thing. That's not what these batteries are made for. These batteries are meant to be plugged in and pretty much stay there. You could unplug it every once in a while, but if you're doing it every day, yes, you're probably gonna start sparking. What I would do is put an on off switch in there somewhere in here in line uh, and that'll take care of a lot of that problem. And again, 48 volt, 52 volt current in rush is, it can be a problem for sure. 72 volt is where you're really gonna get that problem. So if you're running X1 Pro or motorcycle conversion, definitely get some sort of power switch. And I do have 72 volt batteries like this that have the, the, the switch on there. And you definitely wanna make sure that you have it powered off when you're connecting it and then turn it on afterwards to, to gently let that current flow in, not that strong current in rush. All right, hopefully I didn't confuse you guys too much or scare any of you guys away. If you have one of these batteries, do not be afraid. You're not going to hurt anything. Uh, head to johnnynerdout.com if you got any other questions. If you got further in-depth questions, you wanna talk with me one-on-one, -on -one, go to book a consultation, put links down below if you need a direct link to all this stuff. And uh, thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one.